Hello everybody, it is Friday. Time for another episode of Trucker Money, number 39. We'll talk about the week of February 22nd through the 25th. Um, if you're new here, Fridays, we get together to talk about money, all things personal finance, investing, retirement, side income, passive income, side hustles, things you can do to ex- earn extra money outside the truck so that one day we can get out of the truck, maybe have that retirement that we work so hard for, just have a better overall quality of life in general. Because in trucking, things happen, and you might need some stuff to fall back on. This is not advice. It's just me sharing my personal journey, kind of what I do to prepare for the future uh, and have a better quality of life right now. So uh, we have a passive income dividend portfolio that we talk about, any side hustles, uh, which would be earn a little bit doing this YouTube, uh, using the uh, promoting the mud flap app and uh, fuel additives. Check out the links in the description below for some good products. I don't promote anything I don't use. So check that out. Um, now, this week, uh, we earned some dividends here. It was a pretty good week. Uh, not a lot. I, I did some extra purchases this week, I guess. Well, I got payments from uh, Royal Bank of Canada, ticker symbol RY, and LTC Properties. Long-term care facility real estate investment trust picked up a little. I uh, is a time of year to put a little bit of extra money in my my SEP IRA, so I'm slowly contributing that. I kind of seeing a, a downswing in the market here today, so I saw a couple opportunities, pick a couple things up. So I did Bristol Myers UGI, uh, Royal Dutch Shell B shares RDSB, uh, some more PPL, Aflac, and Stag Industrials. Now we got. One raise today, uh, a dividend increase from Royal Bank of Canada, ticker symbol RY. They raised their dividend 5.75%. This is one of my favorite banks. It's a Canadian bank. I kind of prefer Canadian banks myself. Nothing uh, against uh, U.S. banks. Look at the track history and some other stuff, and there's a couple Canadian banks I like, and Royal Bank of Canada is one of them. So, happy about that. Didn't do anything except for be a loyal shareholder. Um, that's pretty much it for the week. It was a it was a slow week. Other than that, busy doing other things and uh, celebrating getting one year older. So that's kind of hard to take sometimes. This week I wanted to. Well, I was going to talk about my my tax return. Just touch on that a little bit about some different different things I did um, to lower my taxable income, but. Uh, I screwed up and I forgot to go pick that up from the from the CPA. So inst- we'll probably do that next week. Uh, I think I can make it there to get that sometime this week. So this week, let's talk about like 10. I kind of came up with 10 lessons here that rich people teach their children. When I talk about rich people, I'm not talking about celebrities. That's outside the norm. And I'm not talking about um, people like Paris Hilton or athletes. Uh, spoiled little rich kids. Not talking about that. I'm talking about people like me and you, small business people that have built something and want to teach our kids uh, how to handle that money, how to act with it, how to keep it, build something for themselves. So one of the first things that kind of comes to mind is you don't want to you don't want to create a spoiled little brat, spoiled little kid that never wants to work, doesn't know the value of money. So this is kind of the opposite from that. I guess one thing is be to teach your kid to have character with money, but I think by teaching them some of these lessons, you're kind of a byproduct of, of teaching them that. Now, the first thing I would say is rich people teach their kids about the importance of money. Okay, that schools kind of ignore money. They don't they don't teach these kinds of things, and they and they really should. I don't even know if they teach you how to balance a checkbook anymore because I know a lot of schools don't have home ec and things like that, how to budget, how to pay bills, and that like money is what it takes to make things happen in your life. So rich people have conversations with their kids about money. They involve them in things, uh, typically. Number two, they teach their kids the difference between an asset and a liability. And I talked about this a little bit in a previous video, the difference between an asset and a liability. Um, you know, middle class people that have built wealth don't want their kids going out and buying fancy cars. They don't want their kids going out blowing money on on ridiculous things, frivolous things. They want them to go out and spend money at a young age on assets. 
which will therefore over the years uh, help them stand a better chance of living a better quality of life later on. Number three, they teach them how to manage money. Going back to having, you know, budgeting money, balancing a checkbook, you know, you need to, you know, put so much towards your bills, so much towards saving. And typically, uh, these types of people teach their kids to be charitable. Um, that's uh, Most of them do not go without charitable organizations and, and, and charity in their life. Um, so the smart people teach their kids that. That alone helps build a lot of character in a young person. Changes their changes their heart, changes their mind. Number four, they teach them different ways to earn money. That well, number one, typically, the uh, the the middle middle class people, business people, and upper middle class and, and lower end rich people will make their kids at a young age go out and work hard at a crappy job. That teaches them a lesson. It teaches them, you know. This is, this is what people do. This is how you earn a living. This is how you work. And you work your way up and instill some values in them. Some good old-fashioned hard work and ethics. And then from there, teach them, you know, this isn't the only way you earn money. You can invest. You can start a business and build that business. You can, uh, you know, transact, buy, sell, trade, things like that. They teach them all these different ways to earn money. And they, they typically involve them in things that they do, especially in their own small business. Number five, they teach them to develop productive habits. So they teach them that you don't go out and play until the work is done. They teach them uh, put so much away every month for investing and saving and charitable stuff. Number six, this might be one of the most important things they teach your kids, is that nobody owes you anything. If you want something, you go out and earn it or you create it. Uh, but nobody owes you a darn thing. And typically, the smarter ones don't don't provide everything that they need in their life. They make them earn it. Like they don't, you're, you know, we as your parents do not owe you a car when you turn 16. You go out and earn that money and buy it or earn half the money, pay for half of it. But just to sit back and think we owe you something, uh, no. The seventh thing to kind of teach them is social influence, acting with character, with money. That there's this thing called social capital and goodwill you build with other people. And young people can pick that up from hanging around adults uh, as opposed to hanging around with other people their age. So if you would take your kid, some people take their kid on sales meetings. Some people take them to different business transactions. They might go sit down with their banker and learn how banking works. But they socially involve them with this process. And just from being around they, they pick things up and they start to, you know, behave better uh, financially. Another thing they teach him is delayed gratification. Um, and this is something that probably creates a lot of spoiled rich kids. They don't teach them that and you don't deserve everything right here, right now. You have to go out and earn it. And it's worth more. If you go out, you're going to enjoy that new, you know, used car a lot better if you go out and work for it as opposed to me buying it and handing it to you right now. You earn that car, you delay that gratification until you earn it, and you're going to take way better care of your things. You're going to appreciate it more. Smart people teach their kids that. And number nine, uh, this one is, is kind of a, I don't know if every kid will understand this, but with some coaching, you could get them there, that money is not finite. There was always more money. So somebody is not poor only because somebody else is rich. Uh, there is not only so much money to go around. Wealth is created every day from various different things. You can go out and create your own wealth. And you don't have to get your wealth or get your money by taking it from somebody else. There's opportunity everywhere. You just have to go find it, take, a, take advantage of it and create something for yourself. Um, it's not a zero-sum game where there's only so much to go around. And uh, I think this is kind of where schools fall short because I think uh, in a way that they kind of teach that. And that really stifles creativity in young people when they're at their most creative. Uh, so a, a parent or an older person teach, teaching, a young per, uh, teaching a young person this could be very helpful to that young person's development and creating a mindset of, uh, 
looking for opportunity rather than just waiting as, oh, I can't do that because there's already somebody doing it. Things like that. It's it's everywhere. And the 10th thing they kind of teach them, and, and where I gather this a lot of this from is from a book called uh, The Millionaire Next Door by Dr. Thomas Stanley. They go out and they, they survey a lot of millionaires, small business people, unsuspecting millionaires, people you'd never think that they were. Uh, they are perceived to be middle class, but they're actually very wealthy. And kind of the 10th thing that they teach them is that you cannot possibly know everything, especially in business. The smartest people and the most successful people seek out people that are smarter than them and they listen to them. So when they go to a business deal, that might be them, they might have their attorney, they might have their accountant and whoever else they need. And they involve them, take their advice and help them make deals, things like that. Um, in my business, I'm not very good at sales. So I just contracted out. I found somebody that is very good at sales. I said, hey, go out, sell my business. They did that. I paid them for it. I probably could not have achieved, achieved that on my own. So they don't let pride get in their way. They know when it's time to find somebody smarter than them. And that can make all the difference. So anyway, just thought I'd share these, these lessons I learned from that book. Um, and helps to build a young person with character and teach them, you know, kind of set them up psychologically to be financially successful because I think it's a valuable lesson. So if you like these kinds of things, hit that thumbs up button, like the video, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.